Every now and then a movie comes along that has a discernible impact on society rather than merely entertaining us. The 1942 film Bambi caused a drop in deer hunting. Super Size Me took on McDonald's, Jaws took a bite out of beach holidays for a summer or two. Despite its scientific inaccuracies, the 2004 film The Day After Tomorrow made global warming matter to the general public. All the President's Men, the 1976 movie which told the story of two Washington Post reporters who investigated the Watergate scandal, inspired high enrolment numbers in journalism schools. Now in 2023, a new movie, Sound of Freedom, shines a light on the darkest of places and has the potential to inspire great change. Many believe it could be a catalyst for the next great abolition movement in the same way William Wilberforce used the shackles from slave ships, along with his voice and political influence, to advocate for the abolition of the British slave trade in the 1800s. But the power of the movie will only be as significant as the willingness of principled people to join together to create our own Wilberforce moment. If we watch Sound of Freedom and are burdened by the horror, indignant at the injustice, yet remain silent, we will not witness the societal change so desperately needed. The movie is not fiction. And despite it being hidden beneath false narratives of individual rights and sexual freedom, there are more people being bought and sold today in sordid marketplaces than at any other point in human history, including when the slave trade was legal. The slave masters of Wilberforce's time have morphed into today's traffickers, sex buyers, pimps and pornographers who are exploiting and abusing millions of women and children across the globe. One in every three trafficking victims detected is a child and one in six were trafficked under the age of 12. This is a diabolical and grave injustice that we must do all we can to stop by exposing the darkness and lobbying our government to cut the demand for sex trafficking off at its source. Now to do that, we must first acknowledge what fuels it. Sex trafficking is not a third world problem. It exists wherever there is pornography and prostitution. There is an undeniable link a vicious and evil cycle. To our shame, Australia is one of the top 10 consumers of pornography in the world. It exists on the back of children and women victims who are exploited and trafficked. It also creates an appetite for purchasing sex, which again, vilely exploits children and primarily women, robbing them of their very souls. Border force raids continue to uncover sex slavery in Australian suburban brothels and massage parlours. Now, the connection between the consumption of porn and purchased sex is not mere correlation, it is causation. Sex trafficking will never end whilst we continue to whitewash pornography. It is imperative that we demolish the false narratives our culture uses to justify it. Jesus hates pornography. He said that to look on a woman lustfully is to commit adultery in one's heart. But sadly, with the introduction of the mobile phone and easy access to the internet, Sexual content is just one click away for both adults and children whose innocence is relentlessly under attack. We're working on a number of campaigns in order to protect our nation's children. We're campaigning to remove pornographic books from children's shelves in public libraries. We believe that outdoor advertising should be suitable for children's viewing. And we continue to advocate for the urgent need to introduce online age verification legislation, such as already operating in France, in England, and a number of US states. In regards to prostitution, to effectively end sex trafficking, we must pass legislation that criminalizes sex buying and pimps, whilst providing their victims with resources to find a life outside of exploitation. The European Parliament has approved the equality or abolitionist model as best practice for preventing sexual exploitation in prostitution. Originating in Sweden in 1999, it's now in Norway, Iceland, Canada, France, Ireland and Northern Ireland. Variations are in Finland and South Korea and it's under consideration also in Italy, Israel and Luxembourg. And here in Australia, the calls for its implementation are gaining momentum. 
Now this is all a lot to take in, I understand that, but the movie Sound of Freedom has presented us all with an opportunity to discuss issues that are normally not very comfortable conversations. So will you join us as we take up the torch that Wilberforce carried before us? ACL continues to fight for change, but we need people like you who are moved enough not to remain silent in the face of this modern day injustice. I hope you get to watch the movie. I hope your heart is moved with compassion by what you witness. But more than that, my prayer is that you will join us in our modern day fight for justice for those who have no voice. Please go to our website acl.org.au for more information on all of these campaigns. God bless you.